All right, welcome back for more Windows 10 content. We just had the big release of Windows 10 a couple of days ago on the 29th. Uh, either late that night or sometime yesterday, we got the new Windows 10 SDK. Uh, there were a couple of days I was in limbo waiting for the SDK to do development with the new version of Visual Studio uh, Community 2015. Uh, so now again, like I said, back for more content. And in the last video, we did adaptive triggers. And these are very important when we look at doing kind of the responsive uh, UI for Windows 10 because we're going across so many different platforms and screen sizes and all that kind of stuff. All right, and that was just a very basic intro. Uh, here's how you use adaptive triggers. And now we're going to get a little deeper and use the Rotten Tomatoes API uh, to pull back some data about movies and display kind of more or less information depending on how big or small our screen or our width is. So for references to the Rotten Tomatoes API, we've got a link below to a previous, well actually sorry, we've got a link to the main blog post for this tutorial, which in turn has a link to the Rotten Tomatoes API post. So you can go check out uh, those to get a little extra background if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a Visual Studio uh, Windows 10 project open here. And I've gone ahead and added several files, and these are going to help us get back the information uh, from the Rotten Tomatoes API and then convert it to a C-sharp object, all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk about what they do. So I'm not going to go in and show you every piece of code. Uh, I've actually got a link below to the GitHub sample, so you can actually go in and dissect the code there. Uh, but won't be able to go through everything here, but we'll kind of talk about some of the things that we're doing. So first off, I want to create a movies data source uh, file, and this is going to go out uh, using this, the call here, the API call, and it's going to go out and it's going to get back uh, some JSON. So this is just a JSON string here, or excuse me, here is a JSON string, and and so I get back that JSON string, and then I need to convert it somehow to some kind of C sharp object. Uh, so I've got here, I've got a Rotten Tomatoes object to find, a class. And this Rotten Tomatoes object is basically just the object model for what gets returned from the Rotten Tomatoes API. And again, we're dealing with uh, lists of movies. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we look at the, uh, what do we call it here? Uh, basically, we have a list of movies here, so it comes back with a list of movies. And each of those movie objects has several things, ID, uh, title, year, rating, consensus, um, and then some posters as well. So a lot of different things. So we're converting into that object model. But when we bind to our UI, I don't actually need all of these properties. So I created basically this minimal uh, movie class, one that I define, that implements I notify property change. So if any of these properties change, they'll update the UI also. And we're just keeping track of name, rating, year, description, and image. So pretty simple. So we've added those couple of files to be able to go out and get that data. And now we need to go in and create our UI. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a templates resource dictionary. So I'll add new and new item. And I'll do a resource dictionary and call it templates.xaml. And these templates are going to represent uh, the different data templates for the different states of our U, uh, of our UI. So I'm going to just paste these in here and I'll talk a, a little bit about what they are. So in the first, so notice we have again the phone, tablet, and the desktop. With the phone, uh, we have less real estate, less screen. So we're just going to have a text block with the name, and then we'll have the poster image. Then the then in the tablet item template, we're going to add a little more. We'll have name, year, rating, and then we'll have the image also. So we'll just add a little bit of information here and make these font sizes a little bigger. Then when we get down to desktop, we've got a lot more screen. So we can actually add the movie description here and bind to that description property, be able to show a little bit about the movie, not just kind of the title and rating year, stuff like that. So that's those are the different templates we're going to use. Then in our main page.xaml, we're just going to use the adaptive triggers to basically switch between those templates as the screen size gets bigger or smaller. So I'm going to copy in some of this code. And again, you can check out the GitHub sample to go through each line of code. But notice, uh, just like we did previously, oh, and I skipped one step. 
So notice that when I try to use the phone item template, the tablet item template, etc., uh, they are not pulling up because we need to go into the app.xaml and do an application dot resources. Oh, didn't auto complete there. Resources. And then come in and do a resource dictionary and give it the source of templates.xaml. And then I'll close this out. So now if we come back to main page.xaml, uh, those errors go away. So we should be all right there. And it looks like the this hasn't been updated, but we should be okay. So all we're doing, we have this visual state group, and that group has three visual states, the phone, the tablet, and the desktop, just like we're used to in the previous uh, in the previous tutorial. So then all we're doing is we're taking this main list view, this list view here, and we are changing out, we're swapping out the item template, phone, tablet, and desktop here, depending on the screen size. So from zero to uh, 600, we'll have the phone, and then tablet will be six to nine, and desktop will be 900 plus. All right. So this is again pretty similar to what we did uh, last time, just adding a little more comprehensive app. So now the last thing we need to do is go into our main page uh, code behind and just add the logic to uh, go out and make the call to create that movies data source and then to bind it, uh, set it as the item source for our main list view. So I'm going to go grab this little bit of code here and this is going to be our API call so notice I left my API key blank you'll need to get that and that'll be in that that reference uh, blog post for the Rotten Tomatoes API if you need it uh, and I've got these calls and basically one of them is going out and asking for 15 movies that are in box office and one of them is going out and asking for 15 movies on DVD so once I've got that I just need to come in and do main list view dot item source and I'm going to set it to a new instance of the movies data source and then use the box office API call so this is going to go out and should get uh, 15 movies that are in the box office so I'm going to pause one second uh, and when I come back I will have added my API key and then I will go ahead and run this to, so we can see what it looks like all right, so we've got the API key added there. Again, you'll have to get your own API key. Don't want to have mine out there uh, for everyone to see. Uh, but you go out and get that through the Rotten Tomatoes um, developer website. And then we'll go ahead and run this. And we should see, so this is, uh, this is our desktop state. So notice we have these descriptions here, right? We got a little more room. Uh, and as we shrink down, we'll go into the tablet state where we now just have title, year and image and then we go down a little bit more and we'll get down the phone where we just have title and image so this again is very important to be able to adapt your your screen UI based on the screen size because of how many devices your apps are gonna have to go across so some of those cool uh, new features in XAML again the adapter trigger is pretty useful and necessary uh, and then kinda wanted to tie that into something I think is pretty cool with the Rotten Tomatoes API. So more Windows 10 videos to come.